Hello everyone and welcome back to the Geek Productive YouTube channel, it is Francesco here and on today's feature we're doing a Todoist setup tour. I'm going to show you around my Todoist account and um, I haven't done a Todoist setup video for maybe about six months now. I thought it would be good to guide you around the core ways I use Todoist now. Um, I'm going to be touching on the way I use the Today tab, the next seven days, the inbox throughout the day and also a little bit about the labels and filters which I've been playing around with a lot more. Now, for those who don't know, I've been a Todoist user for around about five, six years now, quite a long time user, um, and I really love the application. It's a way for planning my next 30 days. Now, my Todoist experience has changed a lot since I started using it, um, as from I started using it when I was in the world of work and and I uh, still am, of course, but uh, I've obviously you know, changed uh, sort of career, not career, but uh, it's transitioned over time. So hopefully this gives you an outline of how I'm using it now as someone who is self-employed um, and also someone who's using it uh, as a day-to-day -day one. I'll also touch on near the end the Notion side of stuff and how I use that. But without further ado, guys, let's jump in because I think this is an application a lot of you guys are using. Um, and will benefit from hopefully. So without further ado guys, let's dive in. Here is my Todoist account. Now, the first thing I would say is that the dark mode has come on and my, re my main reasoning around having dark mode on has been sort of the eyes uh, and my main reason behind it is just because it's less on eye strain. Uh, I previously was using the red theme so you can find obviously themes and settings um, and I was using the red one, I was pretty uh, happy with it, and then I moved to the dark one, and I noticed my eyes have been a lot less stressed when using the computer. So I've kept that one on, and obviously other sort of uh, theme-based stuff is the sort of karma-based side of stuff. So I've, I've just recently come back from holiday, so my karma has been pretty poor. I've, I've just lost sort of like a, a, a long weekly streaks. But as you can imagine, um, my karma is quite high still, 62,000. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, I'm still using it as a way to track, I guess, um, progress. And, and I, I'd see my tasks have become a lot more refined in terms of what I'm trying to do, like my daily goal and, and trying to keep on top of it. Like, But I would say uh, the amount of tasks I'm trying to keep in my sort of area has increased. So I normally recommend like having between three to six tasks in your today area. Uh, you can see my today area here, and I have well, I had since this morning about ten. So I've really increased that a lot. I've got I have anywhere between eight and twelve tasks. Uh, a lot of them are low priority, and it might be because I'm moving house, which I move now, and I had like loads of small tasks to do um, in areas that I've had to adapt to. So here is my my today area. Um, as you can see, I have done things a little bit differently. Um, probably since the last video, I've been using just two main areas and I have been so for about nine months at least roughly um, you can see I've got personal up and uh, a work up so personal is a green uh, folder which essentially is just all of the stuff I'm doing for myself um, and work is anything that clearly is based around work and the good thing is I don't necessarily have lots of clients now which is good so I'm I'm at least you know it's, it's fine-tuned it it's keeping those two uh, separate and the blue and the green really do help when I'm sort of seeing in my task what tasks I've got uh, and it really has helped. You may also see that I'm using quite heavily the labels. Now I've really brought and back the labels that I was using. Um, my main reason behind this is because um, I want to essentially you know use labels in a bit more of a refined sense. I used to use it like with context just adding random like to at 10 at thing but now I'm using like these three core ones at least, uh, which is town, uh, to see tasks I can do in town, in coffee shops, and home. Ones I, uh, you know, must be done at home, like recording or anything like that. And I feel like that's really helped, at least in the last two months, is having like a really refined setup. Uh, like actually just going, I've got tasks here and here, versus like a million different labels and trying to find them. Now, obviously, like, for example, in town, I can just click this and I can see, see all of the tasks I have for the day, which is really helpful. And the same with home is actually being able to see all the tasks I can do at home. And I, I do this because I move, like, between my day, I normally start 9 a.m. in town and then go home about 11. And then I'm back in, in town about 2. And then I'm back in uh, town at uh, home, you know, about 4 o'clock. 
So uh, I have those two labels, and the other tertiary level, the third label, is Alice. Um, obviously, many of you know that Alice is one of the content writers at Keep Productive. Uh, she does such a great job, and the, the great thing is now I've got the label, because I'm working with her more routinely, it's just having a really simple label to keep track of anything that relates to her in being able to keep in touch with her and stuff like that. So that's just a really simple label. Whether I'll keep it or not is a different story. Whether I need it, uh, it really doesn't. I guess it, 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 it it's very relative and it's an experiment at the moment. So you're probably wondering, uh, you know, how am I keeping my tasks? Um, at the moment, I sort of have that sort of two to three rule in making them actionable. So obviously script, YouTube, script, Skillshare, Zapier, Panic, Patreon, Slack, Scheduled. So no more than like three words. Um, and I'm trying to keep this rule up for the majority of my tasks. And the main reason behind that so they don't get complicated. Um, I don't want like a long string of some. But then again, if you're someone that really needs to define a task, like, you know, I need this, this, and this, then that might actually help you. So it's really dependent on how you work. Um, but for me, I have, like having that really definitive stuff. I've also generalized a lot of the tasks. Like I, I used to put, like, for example, record YouTube, edit YouTube, schedule Facebook webinars. Like it was a lot more specific. Um, and also... That does help um, when I'm going into detail uh, and start planning. And I normally, so now what I do is uh, I, I use the comments a lot. So I normally add a lot more other context to the comments. Um, and as you can see here, it's got the, the newsletters I need to send. So I've actually improved the way that I've been doing this in terms of like adding any comments that I need inside of here. So what I quite like is the way that I've improved this. It's very simplistic. Although I have like more tasks per day, it's actually a lot more refined because I'm planning quite efficiently. Now, as you can see here, I've got actually Saturday and Sunday, I've got tasks in, which is, uh, I've actually done this one, uh, which is not normal for me because my wife's still in on holiday. So I'm actually just doing a few things when she's out so I can just catch up for the week ahead. Um, so that's abnormal for me to have tasks there. I normally have tons of personal tasks, which are normally filling up those things, like, you know, like it could be like errands for the house and things like that, which can be done on the weekend. Um, and I'm normally, uh, so what I do with my uh, Notion account now is I'll pop open Notion. Uh, let me just get off the uh, YouTube calendar we have. I'll go into my home area and I'll click goals uh, for July. I'll probably do a video on this separately. But as you can see here, I have a, a ton of goals for July specifically. Um, and these are like headliner goals, like things I want to do by the end of the month. Um, and you can see I've got everything from relaunching the Notion course or refilming it to scripting uh, switch courses and emailing it, blah, 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 all the good stuff there. Um, so you can see that, that there are a load of tasks there. And what I'll do is on a Thursday afternoon, I'll typically, so that's today actually, uh, I'll typically sit down and then I'll open up next seven days and start plugging in tasks that relate most to these. So it's almost like dissecting week by week what I need to do to complete these tasks, which has been really helpful. Now I find tune this method a lot because I only have these two apps open. Uh, what I previously used to do is open up my uh, you know task, uh, my Baron Fig notebook and then write them down onto there. But literally now I will just open this up and dump the task into there. And normally it brings my next seven days to about 40 tasks and that really does help. Now I keep everything mainly in next seven day view. I love this add task ability. And one thing that has changed since we last did a video on this is the uh, group, the blue um, uh, icon for P3, uh, it's the lowest priority. I love the blue icon, it's changed. Uh, definitely separate some of the tasks in making it look colder uh, and a lot better. Again, the biggest change that I didn't even mention was that I previously used Todoist as a sort of chronological planning for all of my week ahead. I've stopped that. And the main reason I stopped that is was an experiment about seven months ago just to go, okay, can I potentially just not make this? So what I previously did is like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., had everything planned out literally to the second. But now I've sort of refined this. I literally start at the top at the start of my day, like the red tasks, and then work my way down. And that actually really helps and has helped my own productivity. So I've been, seem to be getting more done during the day. So I wanna show you how I use uh, Inbox and then filters as well, and then we'll, we'll wrap things up. So Inbox is uh, really just a dumping ground throughout the day. 
Normally about four o'clock, I'll clear this out, make sure everything's in the right place. Um, and if they're less than two minutes, like the GTD rule, I'll probably just do them on the spot. But actually, this has been a really good uh, way to do it throughout the day, like getting emails and stuff so that it doesn't distract me from the main core task. So I normally don't touch my today at all, really. I just try and get them done. And the inbox is basically planning for the next couple of days. So I do a little bit of micro planning during the week, about 10 minutes each day, which does save me a lot more time on my Thursday afternoon planning because I tend to already have a lot of stuff planned. And I can gut my account, which basically means... For example, when I'm doing that Thursday afternoon planning, I'll look at my goals inside of Notion, bring them over to Todoist, where sort of breaking them down into actionable stuff. Then what I'll do is I'll very simply go in my next seven days and go, what tasks are irrelevant now? Which ones are useless or don't won't move the needle in terms of getting me towards my goals? So guys, uh, hopefully that wraps things up. Let me show you finally the label side of stuff um, because obviously that's quite uh, important. I have one list called a focus list, which is essentially today and no labels. Um, I actually changed this a little bit recently. So basically this was meant to bring up any tasks that don't have, um, I actually I changed, I remember changing it, but basically I wanna move it to at town now. So once I hit save, the focus list is for anything in town now. So this will help me to see all of the tasks that I have for town that is in today, and I can just focus on getting that done. And it's a good way for me to see, like if I, for example, had uh, it uh, for tomorrow, it would sh just filter down really quickly the today tasks that I had to do in town because that's sort of my like focus work, I guess. At home, it's a lot more relaxed because I'm doing something that, I don't know, is I would say less intensive than necessarily getting things done in a coffee shop. So the focus list has been useful. Again, I didn't actually have the town labels before. That's why I wasn't using it. But this actually has refined things even more. So guys, uh, hopefully I give you a good overview of my Todoist account. As it, you can see, it's changed a lot since we last did a feature. But hopefully it will help. Um, I got a lot of great tips. Um, I remember Matt Raglan put out a lot of stuff about, uh, you know, I think it was a couple of months ago, actually, nine months ago. I'll include Matt's YouTube channel below. But he was talking about the chronological prioritization, and I just sort of ditched it after seeing that it doesn't really work. And I guess that was a long-term stint that I had with that. Um, and also learning a lot about, you know, from like Tim Ferriss, um, lots of his features about just like getting three or four things done per day that move the needle um, instead of necessarily getting the small stuff done, that doesn't necessarily move the needle. So I try my best not to include tasks on my list like clear email inbox because that's not necessarily a move the needle task. It's just something that's small that you do on a routine basis. So I don't tend to keep routine stuff on here. Anyway guys, a big, big thank you for stopping by today. If you're brand new to the Keep Productive YouTube channel, you better hit subscribe because it'd be great to have you in this community. If you would like to join the Facebook community, you can do. And also, we are sort of relaunched our Patreon. If you want to become a Keep Productive Plus member, which means you get exclusive webinars at the end of the month, and a brand new Slack community that really is starting to bring up some chatter. We have a couple of themes in a week that we chat about, and also some more exciting stuff coming soon. Please do join. But guys, I am looking forward to chatting with you in the future. See you in another video. Cheers everyone, make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.